That's true. Hello. We are live. It says on my on my, on my screen. So does it say the same thing for you guys or not? It says the same thing for us. Okay. I mean, for me at least. Yes, it does. Well, that was an awkward beginning to the episode one of, of Trek Chat. Hello and welcome to the first episode of a brand new Star Trek themed podcast, Trek Chat. I am Sean, your host. You may know me from YouTube channel Trek on the Tube, or you may not know me at all. Whatever the case, thank you very much for taking the time to stop by and giving this new project a try. Joining me today for this very special inaugural episode are two very special guests, fellow YouTubers and friends, Gary from channel Trek Apprise. How are you doing? I'm very good. How are you? I'm fine. That was very British. I'm not even British, but thank you very much. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really glad that I can be here. Well, it's an honor to have you. And Nick from Channel Kowalski, how are you doing? I am great. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we do apologize for being so awkward. This is the first episode. Um, we, we're trying to do this live on, on YouTube. It is in private, so this is pretty much how we're going to do all of our episodes. Or at least I'm going to do mine, because I'm not going to have the same guests every time. Okay, so before we dive into today's conversation, I do want to actually take the time to talk about this podcast a little bit. Um, what, what I want to do with it, what I want it to be. The plan is to invite two guests for every episode and have a casual discussion about a Star Trek related theme. Sometimes we're going to be talking about fun, fun stuff. Sometimes, you know, things might get heavy because as we all know, Star Trek can get pretty heavy. Uh, I want to keep every episode, you know, to about 30 minutes long with the exception of course of this one being the first that might run for a little longer. And if all goes according to plan, you'll soon be able to find Trek Chats on all the major podcast applications. Uh, I'll also be uploading this to my YouTube channel as audio only. All right. So um, today's topic is essentially with all these new Star Trek TV shows and movies being announced and having the words like is having the words Star Trek in the title enough to actually consider something Star Trek? What do you guys think of this? Nick? Uh, yeah, I think that, uh, no matter what the, what the product is, what the medium is, I think if you put Star Trek in it, I think then there is inherently a uh, responsibility to make it Trek like, but, uh, I, I'm interested to see, like, I know there's a lot of different things, shows and stuff like that coming out soon, in the next few years that they may not be kind of the same format, but, uh, I think that even if it doesn't follow necessarily the same Star Trek formula, I think if it's labeled Star Trek, it is Star Trek. And they do have a certain, uh, I guess, bar to reach uh, in order for it to be considered good by fans, but shouldn't be disqualified, even if it doesn't follow the traditional formula. Okay. And and so Gary, what do you think about this? No, I, I do have to agree um, with Nick on this. Um, it doesn't necessarily, if, if you put Star Trek on anything, you can put Star Trek on a cheeseburger, it's not necessarily going to make it Star Trek. Um, you have to, as Nick said, there's a big responsibility with the name because we're not just talking about a TV show that you, you sell, you sell an idea. And Star Trek always been an idea. At least that's what I, I thought about the show. And, you know, if you have an idea that you have to hold up to that, to that image, um, that all of us endear and and cheer and um just basically love um about the whole show and that's a love that love that comes from star trek that that is really really hard to hold up to so i definitely i definitely agree with unique um there's a big responsibility and it's not necessarily um it's called star trek but it's not necessarily um, star trek if it doesn't feel like if it doesn't feel right so you disagree with Nick, right? No, I'm, 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 I, I, no, I do agree with him. Okay. Am, am, am I might am I just mess this up. What did I say? No, <laughs> I feel I feel like you're disagreeing because I feel like Nick thinks no. that what it like whatever quality or whatever style of content you have, as long as they slap the Star Trek name on it, it is Star Trek. Whereas you feel they have to respect. Oh, okay. Um, so in this case, certain... sorry, I do disagree with you. <laughs> no, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> it, it should have made my point more more clear. I don't. Uh, I, I think that uh, <laughs> no. I, you, it, go I ahead. Won. Sorry, Gary. No, I, I I I do feel like like you know you can you can call a cheeseburger a cheeseburger. If you put Star Trek in it, it's not going to be Star Trek. It's still hmm. going to be a cheeseburger. Um, you can call something short treks. Um, but if it doesn't feel Star Trek, it's not going to be Star Trek. 
even if you sell it as Star Trek. There's been a lot of things that they sell this, uh, sold as Star Trek, but even like low, um, small figurines or you know games before. But even though games uh, felt like Star Trek, you sell a book, um, it feels like Star Trek because when you when you read it, it does. It has to feel the same way how you watch the TV shows and how you actually interact with um, with the idea of of what you've been seeing in the screen. And if you get a book that says, I don't know, Star Trek um, roommates, and it doesn't necessarily have to do anything with Star Trek, it's just like a couple of guys talking in a room, <laughs> that, that doesn't won't necessarily make it Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would say that I think we both agreed to the point that there is a certain standard that if someone were to put Star Trek onto something that it should meet. Uh, but I think, yeah, if you have a book entitled Star Trek Roommates, I mean, that's just expanding the larger Star Trek universe as a whole. And uh, I think it's I, I think it's OK to do that if you manage people's expectations going into it, um, because otherwise you're, li in my opinion, you're limiting what Star Trek can grow into if it's just got to be about Starfleet. And there's a ship, and there's a crew, and their explorations, and they're just doing these that, set things. That I agree on. I, I agree that um, if you no, were to I, limit, I do agree with that too. If if you were to limit Star Trek to just having like it has to be a captain and a bridge crew exploring space on a ship, then like that limits Star Trek a lot, and we wouldn't have had you know to some certain extent we wouldn't have had Deep Space Nine, right? But then take a show yeah. like the um, well, not officially announced, but hopefully upcoming Starfleet Academy, um. Will having it take place, because I'm assuming they're going to have it take place in Starfleet Academy, and the only kind of references to Star Trek we're going to have will be, I suppose, costumes and maybe um, some of the tech. Even though a lot of the tech arguably wouldn't necessarily be Star Trek anymore, because like everyone has an iPad nowadays. Um, the only tech that they're going to have is maybe replicators. They won't have phases. This is Starfleet Academy. So it, like, how is that Star Trek? Like, how, do, how, do, how is it? actually star trek how is it not just uh, another um, college so, or school tv show schoolyard show I, I would say that the starfleet academy show is going to have an easier time with it because you can still sell the ideals of teamwork and camaraderie and bright future with inherently through that especially if they're showing and teaching people how to feel that way it's going to be an easier sell but then when you compare that so it's going to kind of push the ideals um, of the original Star Trek, which is like the, di the, di the diversity and... Uh... Yeah, I think so. I think it'll be an easier sell because I think it may even feel more like Trek than, say, Discovery does because it's going to be so, like, bare bones because it's an education center. So they're going to mm -hmm. hit you with the propaganda, you know. They're going to try to break you down and, and instill these values in you, and I think that'll play through on screen. Hopefully, Hopefully we don't have, like, a weird, dark version of Starfleet Academy where people are like, cheating on their test and i don't know it's like, <laughs> i don't know i don't know you know i don't know they get yeah, reprimanded but in, in black rooms and dark black rooms right? I, that's um, right yeah, everyone's getting screamed <laughs> and yelled at and detention and stuff i don't know like the breakfast club in space i don't know <laughs> that that's me though i think starfleet i think the starfleet academy show has got a leg up on the section 31 show that they're talking about with michelle yo um uh because that one is going to feel so jarringly different than anything people have experienced before. Mm. But that's me. What do you think about Starfleet Academy, Gary? How does that? How, how will that fit into Star Trek? It depends on the writers. Uh, I have to say, because um, in my opinion, at least, um, because you know, they can they can they can do a Starfleet Academy um, show like what they did with the class uh, from the Doctor Who. Um, franchise so they did a spin-off uh, for Doctor Who called The Class and they had multiple members and all they had capabilities and even in the pilot episode um, the 12 Doctor appeared and oh just like oh you're like a team together you're just like you know continue what the, what you do and then be good and whatsoever um, but the show didn't really last for like one or maybe one and a half season it 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 it, it being cancelled um, for Starfleet Academy obviously um, there's there's an other option, but if the writers are clever and they're going to do um, do things that you know going to please Trekkies um, in a way that maybe we're going to see an evolution of um, 
a, a specific crew, like like <laughs> um, seeing um, Wesley Crusher. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be Will Beaton anymore, but um, let's see. Let's we're going to see Wesley Crusher interacting with all these uh, folks in the Academy. Obviously, the timeline is very um, interesting as well because you don't know if you're going to get a uh, Starfleet Academy show in the original series era or the TNG era or even further up in the future. Or maybe it's going to be Discovery. Who the hell knows at this at this point? But it all depends on on the writers and what they're going to do with it. Um, if it's going to be just like um, Beverly um, Hills or, or Beverly Hills 90210 or something like that, then that's kind of be going to be boring. But if there's going to be something interesting like what we've seen in Deep Space Nine, um, that they have red squads, um, they have, um, you know, the students, they have um, like in TNG, they have the kind of uh, Locarno business going on there. The, they could do interesting stories, but it, it a lot depends on the writers. Um, I do see potentials on on Starfleet Academy, and I I, I really hope it's gonna be the, a good show, and it, I really hope it it kind of gonna to stand up for the ideals of Star Trek. Um, but yeah, well, um, I think I think generally speaking, it depends on the writers and what era they're going to put in it, and you know what they're going to do with the story, because there's a lot of opportunity on over there. But again. So we're doing them with too much. <laughs> we, we we do we do keep going back to this um these ideals. We keep talking about the ideals and like the fundamental the fundamental ideas behind Star Trek. That was like the diversity and the the respect of everyone and and kind of all this optimism and positivity. And is that yeah. something that needs to be respected and that needs to be kept in any or every iteration of Star Trek that comes? Or can can a start like can a section thirty one show actually exist and be all dark and gritty? Or could we do a show about people that exist within the Federation but that don't respect the Federation laws? Could we do a a show on like a, a ship of outlaws that outright hate Starfleet and that you know try to navigate away from the rules? Is I, that still Star Trek? Yeah. So I I think that you could um, have a show. Where it? Hello. 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 I think Nick cut off. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Well, well Nick started talking and he, he just disappeared. <laughs> Nick started talking and he just disappeared, which, which is horrible because I think he had a really interesting thing to say and then he just disappeared. Maybe he'd be still saying it if we just don't hear him and oh, he doesn't God, hear that, us. That would be terrible. That would be terrible. Well, I mean, okay, so he's, he's saying something on our on our on our um Twitter feed here. Twitter chat. Okay. Yeah. What do you think, though? Is it off camera or camera? <laughs> I Can't mean, make... off air or on air. <laughs> Can't make this shit up. Your PC ran into a random problem and needs to restart. We're just collecting some error info and then we'll restart for you. Okay. Um, so he's rebooting his PC and he'll be back later. Okay. We'll carry on talking. And then we'll, oh, we'll have, him, and then we'll yeah. have, him, have him join back after. Hmm. Okay. So what do you think? Do you think we could do a show about like a, a band of uh, misfits or outlaws that have nothing to do with the Federation or Starfleet, slap the name Star Trek on it, and is it still Star Trek? Imagine they don't respect any of the ideals that Gene Roddenberry instilled in the franchise. Okay, so um, have you seen the uh, have you seen the um, Team Russ production Renegades? No, it's basically seen a that. kind of uh, it's a it's a really interesting fan movie. It's um, it features Tuvok, please features Echeb. Um, there's Admiral um, Chekhov in it. Um, it's a really interesting uh, movie, and they actually done a second episode for it. But that basically. Um, and um, so that basically that show um, picks up on a rebel uh, ship, but obviously they against the Federation at the beginning, and the um, and Admiral Chekhov knows a lot of things about um, these uh, these guys, and and Tuvok um, goes there um, to actually try to like he kind of plays as a as a spy for Section Thirty One. It's a really interesting movie. I would definitely recommend to watch it. It says an interesting story, and it it it's not um, showing you that um, optimistic Star Trek um, people that you know you see in Enterprise and Voyager or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
but it's, it's still a really interesting um so they still feel somehow feels a bit Star Trek feels, feels close to it even though they are against it but they have a good um they have a cause that you can relate to and with a section 31 idea obviously it's at the moment it's just a rumor it's an idea but with that i my my initial problem is um that i don't even know what did i want to say <laughs> No, but my it's Star Trek, you know, Star, Star Trek. It used to be. It, it used to be, and it was, it was positive and optimistic. And he's back. He's back. <laughs> I'm back. Can you okay. guys look? He's back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I just asked the same question to to Gary, and he talked about Star Trek Renegades, uh, which is a fan production. Which you know, it does um, kind of it, it shows us a band of misfits, apparently, mm -hmm. but. But you said that, um, so Tuvok is in this? Mm hmm Tuvok the character. Tuvok, Ad right? Admiral Chekhov. And, um... Okay, so if you were to take all of these already established Star Trek like characters and elements, if you were to take Tuvok out and Chekhov out, would it still feel as much Star Trek? Or do you think that is like creating a certain bias in you? I, I think, okay, so, it, okay, I do have to say at the beginning it helped that they were in. It did help. Okay, it because helps, like okay, make they, the transition. They they were there, and that was a connection. Just as um with the first episode with the class, I did watch the class at the first um the first episode because I was expecting the doctor to to show up, um and he did show up. Mm, surprise, surprise. Um, but he didn't really um show up in the later episodes. Um, and as I mentioned, the um show kind of got like boring. I think with um, a lot of people, they expect um recurring stars coming back to the show. Um. Not necessarily the case with Discovery because we didn't really get anyone um, from previous Star Trek shows uh, except behind the camera. But um, with a with a new spin-off series that ne not necessarily features um, a starship and a crew, that might probably be um, easier or helpful to have someone, but we, who be well known and, and you know just connects us with that new era of um, TV, that new show, that new era of Star Trek. Mm. that's how i feel okay. <laughs> i would i would i would go into um, i would i would start um putting my time into a series that you know if i if i know someone was there helping us to you know kind of get through the first episodes for a couple of episodes and then you know that's you're on your own now and i don't know it's, it feels it feels a bit safer to have someone from previous track is it Just reassuring as, you know, to you it's a bit reassuring, yes. I mean, in DS9, you had Captain Picard at the beginning. Um, in Voyager, you had Quark. Mm. So, like, there was always a bit of a connection. In Enterprise, it, you didn't have anyone, but obviously that was a bit, bit of a time jump. So, but yeah. still. Yeah, I mean, Enterprise had uh, that very brief cameo from uh, James Cromwell as uh, Zephyr. Yeah, Cromwell. no, okay, you see, that that, that, that's, yeah. that's again. But that was you, season you four, felt, wasn't it? No, that no, was season, season one. one. When they, when, one. when they launched like oh that that's right day. okay that's right yeah that was i was, I was thinking and then you was like oh my god you know oh yeah, okay yeah that, that was an interesting they did too. do that they did do that i suppose yeah and so there was a tradition of of transitioning characters like um in and out of of series just to to help the new series mm -hmm. pick up so what I were you going to say before you left yeah. oh yeah sure <laughs> uh so yeah right before i left um what i was going to say was you can you can definitely there was a line by uh, Rain Wilson's Mud uh, when they were in prison with Lorca. Oh my God! We're quoting Discovery. The first oh, quote is going to be Discovery. I know, I know, and I this actually forget the whole quote, but it was something to the effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. I don't remember it, but it was something to the effect of like you Starfleet people don't care about you know everybody else that is affected by your war. Like you guys don't care. <laughs> mm. um, the little guys kind of thing, and you could have a show where you're following kind of like a band of maybe smugglers or misfits or whatever, maybe anti-heroes, you know, kind of folks, okay. where they're doing their thing and they act normal, like regular people, like us. They act. They like say people. swear words. and Right. They act like regular people. And then you, and it's almost like a meta joke when they run across Starfleet personnel, they're like, way over the top polite way over the top trusting like way over the top like cooperation like it's almost like it's like it's like they're like like it's weird like it's uncomfortable like it's almost like a cult 
kind of feeling like those starfleet people are very when, weird when they're looking at um like starfleet ships when they're looking at the, the bridge crew on the view screen there's like a white veil over them they're all so perfect and, and right right amazing and it's, you can make it a bit meta where it's like oh okay like so that way you still have those ideals and that's like maybe what a lot of people have stri striven for but not everybody on the planet earth and all of its colonies acts that acts that way and hmm. it could be kind of meta in that sense where it's like yeah it's kind of like a wink nod to the fact that this is maybe kind of like a weird thing that that gene wanted to do back in the day and maybe it doesn't really apply now and now we have more normal acting characters which makes it more interesting because then you have characters you can relate to and they're not so kind of like um i don't know bizarrely nor like bizarrely abnormal like polite and and friendly and trusting and stuff like that because like like you look at any of the Star Trek crews and they're like over the top, like human ideals. Like they have some character flaws and they try to make character episodes, but like they're over the top. Like you, it's hard to relate necessarily directly to a character immediately. And I, I feel like a lot of reasons why people don't like Discovery's crew is because they act a little bit more not like that. Mm. So if you had them not in Starfleet acting that way, I think it would be better. And I still think you could get away with that. Like it still exists in Star Trek. They still run into Starfleet. They're bizarre, and it's just part it, of it. It is interesting, though, because, okay, so you, you go on and you say that um, you would need a, a show about a band of misfits that are unrelated to Star, like Starfleet. But then you say it would be nice to still have this meta joke where we actually interact with Starfleet to bring us in. And Gary says that it would still be nice to have, you know, maybe a, a, like a character that we've already seen in Star Trek transition right. into that show. So... Do we subconsciously need something to remind us that it's Star Trek? Is it possible to take, and I, I use this example when we were talking before the conversation here, Castaway, famous movie with Tom Hanks, um, gets stranded on, a, on an island, right? Could we do Star Trek Castaway? Like, just take the movie as it is. It's a guy lost on an island. No interaction with Starfleet whatsoever. Um, no no, no uh, technology that we've seen in Star Trek, the franchise. And no uniform. It's just he, he was a, a civilian, and now he's stranded on an island. Is it enough to call it Star Trek? Is it because we called it Star Trek that it's allowed to be in the, in this expanded universe that we're creating, or does it still have to have something? I would say that it doesn't need to have something as bold as maybe a previous actor or character, or even running in with Starfleet. I think that having Easter eggs of connections to the previously established shows is how you build the universe and how you just kind of like make those connections because before Mar like this is all kind of like marvel's fault really because they've created the cinematic universe and they have actors jumping in and out and all these things like everything is like so cohesive and all this craziness and before that when you tried to connect several films together it was very small subtle like little Easter eggs, you know, I would actually go to point to a recent example, which is the movie Split, which you didn't know had anything to do with any other film until right at the end. And it was just kind of like, whoa. And it's like, oh, so now this is kind of charged, you know, ties into a larger universe, you know, and yeah, mm -hmm. I think you could have a castaway movie. But at the end, instead of him just rowing off the island, you know, a nebula friggin starship just happens to sling by and, you know, they pick him up. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. Yeah, you could do that. I think. I think you could do that, Gary. But then you wouldn't. You still um, like at the end that guy or that that person who was stranded on the planet. They would still be like, "Oh my God, God bless Starfleet or something." <laughs> right. Right. That, right. You know, at, at the end, we would cut back to the same point. Like okay, at the end, you know, you have start out with something that, that doesn't have to do with uh, Starfleet and anything, but then a Starfleet ship just appears, um, and then hey, God bless Starfleet, they saved us, and then they were gonna be the good guys again. And then, then there you go. You have a connection. Okay. So this. Okay. The thing is, we keep talking about, and it's kind of my fault. I keep talking about something that we haven't created yet. And that's maybe because I'm thinking too much about all of these TV shows that Kurtzman is trying to build towards. What if uh, CBS or Paramount were to actually retcon an existing movie or an existing TV show into the universe of Star Trek? So you can't apply any changes. You can't add any um, distinctive kind of Star Trek characters or features or plot devices. You just have to take the show or the movie as it exists 
and now accept that it's Star Trek. Is that is that is that possible? It is. If you talk about the Orville, absolutely is possible. <laughs> God. <laughs> You know, uh, you know, you know, okay, you know. so Orville and Galax uh, um, Galaxy, Galaxy Quest aside, right? <laughs> I mean, sure. I, I, yeah, I mean, you could do that. Do, but... do we accept it because they just said so and we have to because they're the ones that make the rules? Um, or is it enough to actually completely validate the fact that it's Star Trek? I think that it would entirely depend on the nature of of the property and how they went about doing it. Because if it comes across as a cash grab of just trying to improve on something, then it's going to, I think, fall flat and maybe not be so cohesive. And I would point to what JJ Abrams has done with a few, like the last two or three movies in his Cloverfield universe, where he wants to do this <laughs> bizarre anthology film where they're kind of connected, but they're kind of not. And all it was, was they were like, yeah, at the end of that movie, just, just tack on some Cloverfield references and we'll call it a Cloverfield movie. And it's like, yeah, that wasn't what the point of this movie was. And it feels kind of cheap, you know? So I think if, mm. it, if, it, if it was something that was like something that people could really believe in and really get behind, then I think that's cool. Uh, because I think people inherently like Easter eggs and think people inherently like things that connect and they like the feeling when things connect and make sense in their mind and this cohesiveness. Oh, no, you look like it. it. Even in Discovery, when it kicked up, I'm sorry to interrupt, but even no, when yeah. Discovery kicked up, you've been looking for these sort of things like, oh, when they're going to mention, like, I don't know, uh, Kirk or Spock or oh, in the whole first season, like, oh, when they're going to do this or when they're going to have something that you'd like, oh, I've seen this in the original series or, oh, this will make sense in, in the next generation or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think you that's very true. You, you feel somewhat <laughs> special for noticing uh, the names Matt Decker. You know that everyone else noticed oh, it. Yeah. You're not the only person, but you kind of feel special because you're like, oh, I know that name. Yeah, exactly. Okay, no, so I, I, yeah, yeah, I agree let, with let me, that. Let me throw something at you. Like um, Smallville, um, there's this whole thing about we don't see Superman fly until the very last episode, or we don't see him fly at all, right? Hmm. Um, okay. What if there was... I didn't see it. Well, yeah, spoilers. Um, I haven't, I haven't seen it either. But I just know that that's a, it's a common thing. Anyway, so if we were to have a show that takes place in in the nineties, start. So it's a Star Trek show that takes place in the nineties. There's absolutely no science fiction in it whatsoever. And the last thing we see, like in the last episode, is the beginning of the eugenics wars, um, and the rise of Kana. And that's the only thing that relates to Star Trek in any way. You have got like seven seasons of just a show happening in the nineties. Um. Is that still Star Trek? Yeah, definitely. One hundred percent. Yeah, in, I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, you know, but okay, with these sort of things, um, there's already a connection. Like, if you want to do a Khan series and you want to see, want to show the people how uh, Khan gets to the point when where we see him in the next and the original series, that will be interesting because we're gonna get um, the behind the, the the story of Khan itself, and then the eugenic words that you already know from Star Trek um, anyway. Just the same way, if you want to do a series on Maquis, uh, the Maquis that we got to know the first time from DS, um, and not DS9 from the TNG through DS9 and even in Voyager, if you do a Maquis series, you have the connection already. So you have a certain connection with things that um, that we talk about here, um, like even with Khan or even with um, the Maquis or or even if you want to do a Cardassian only series, it still could work as a Star Trek because it's even the Star Trek and you have a connection towards to it. But if you want to do something that that um that just you know just put Star Trek in it but that have, doesn't really have anything to do with it, like for multiple seasons and at the end like, hey, this is gonna be the one then then you just kind of watch the regular series that could have been called the Expanse or or the Orville or Sequest or whatever. Oh my God! Did you just did you just plug Sequest DSV? Did well, you what's wrong with that? No, nothing. I just thought I think you and I are the only two people that ever watched it. So I think I think um, I think Starfleet Boy has seen Sequest. I'm not sure oh. about that, but I, I haven't. I feel, I'm, I'm still hoping it's gonna return one day because they just left the show in two and a half free season, and then there's no end. So yeah. Sad. Well, anyway, well, I, I agree with, with everything that you're saying, though. Like, that's you, you could have any kind of property where you, if you just throw in that little Easter egg, and honestly, the best 
connections are made when the audience is unaware of them. And this is something that CBS is definitely not, um, I guess, bold enough or ready for, for them to create a show or a film, even if it's, you know, just for CBS All Access, even not even necessarily, you know, going to release in theaters. Where oh, they not, don't not advertise. officially, yeah, not advertise it officially as Star Trek. Correct. They are not ready for that, but that is the one. Those are kinds of things are what people love the most. We all do. Where at the end, it's like that twist. Like again, I go back to the movie Split. Like it was a good movie, but when they hit you with the end twist, you're like your mind's blown because you didn't expect it, and mm. it's so exciting. And and if CBS were to do something like that, where they created a show where it was about World War Three. And all this stuff was going on, and then at the end of it, they were like, oh, yeah, I got to head over to Montana. There's a guy out there that I need to meet, Dr. Cochran. And, like, they ended the series. People would be losing their minds. They would lose their minds because it'd be that's so That's a exciting. very bold move, though, because if you were to drag that up for, like, maybe five seasons or something, that's that's a tough thing, isn't it? It is. But it is. You know, yeah. it, it, would be, it would be different if you obviously would have, like, uh, Dr. Cochran and you follow his story um, during World War III. That, that would have been interesting, too. I mean, that would be more more track because you're following someone who's been already in, in Star Trek, not just um, a group that they're trying to find Dr. Cochran or just help him. I, I think what you're saying here illustrates why CBS would be afraid of doing that. Because if they were to announce this as, oh, well, we're following a group that's looking for Dr. Cochran, you, you, Gary, you would watch the show. But if they were to not announce the show as like related to Star Trek in any way, they just said, we'd, we've done a show in World War Three, you probably wouldn't watch it. No, because you, I'm, I'm not really a war person. <laughs> you'd, end up, you'd, end up watching, you'd end up watching it only after the final episode airs five years right. down the line, okay. once you realize right. it is connected to Star Trek. Yeah, then I, I would I would take some time to actually watch it, but I wouldn't watch it at the first time if they don't advertise it as as um, well. Okay, now I'm kind of contradicting myself, but it's yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't watch it if it's not not Star Trek. But if they mm. slap the Star Trek in a hamburger, I would probably will still try it, <laughs> and I would still say it's not Star Trek. <laughs> okay, so in the end, absolutely anything can be Star Trek. It's just that they have like this necessity to market it as such if it is in order for people to watch it because like if they don't market it as such then people won't watch it that's true uh, well that's I, I feel like that's what they believe i don't i personally don't think that that's true and i would say that history has proven that if you create a property that is engaging on itself mm. and then you throw that little if the show know, or if the movie is good correct if it's good on its will own watch it People will watch it like the 10 Cloverfield Lane movie when they when they renamed it because it wasn't originally named that I forget what the original name of it was, it was a completely other project. Wasn't it? It, it was a completely different movie and you remove the 10 Cloverfield Lane title and you just release it as, you know, John Goodman capturing women in his basement. And it's a good <laughs> like that movie. Is it's good. Like, somewhat less appealing, it. but right. Well, you well, I don't know. It depends <laughs> on what you're into, but. You know, I would have watched it regardless because I like John Goodman. The premise was interesting and it was it was like an interesting thriller. And then they and then if they threw that little bit at the end, but they didn't. They were like, well, how is this movie going to get, you know, views? Well, we'll just throw the word Cloverfield on it and people will, will generate buzz. And some studios, I think, feel that way. I think CBS definitely feels that way about Star Trek right now. Um, yeah, the irony with Cloverfield, though, is if they hadn't written the world Cloverfield in the title, I probably would have went to see that movie. Right. I, right. I, I didn't it watch also it had because... to do with the Cloverfield original movie, mm. but that's unrelated. But, you know, the thing is, is, yeah, I mean, they could make a show that could be really interesting that you could follow. You know, like you said, you could follow Zephyr and Cochran through his adventures through World War Three and maybe not reveal that it's Cochran. Maybe he goes by a nickname <laughs> Z oh. or something like that. And at the end, Big he's Z. like call me call me cochran or something, you know something stupid you know he like looks at the camera and like winks at it you know and, and uh you know and, and maybe he meets his his, his girlfriend they're from the cockroach cochran right that's right yeah that's right where we see where he gets his iconic hat and his poncho <laughs> from uh but you know you could do that but it would be very risky and they do not have faith in the property right now okay so th th there's another thing that kind of kind of can connect to this um and i do apologize bringing this up again but um <laughs> you, you know what i'm gonna say go ahead go ahead <laughs> uh, so 
take take the Orville. <laughs> oh God, I, I knew it. I knew. It. I felt it. The or- there's like a Orville. vibe in his voice. There's like an Orville vibe. Or Orville. I've never heard of it. Can you please elaborate? Okay, so, okay, so, okay, so, okay, so, okay, so take the Orville. It it has it obviously the whole show builds up a little bit on TNG. Um, but and the whole a show. Bit. I, it's a, it's a, a little uh, almost everything actually, but um the whole show basically it's own in its own thing. So if you watch um the Orville, you still see the Orville, but it feels kind of Star Trek. So imagine if they don't slam the Orville itself as a title on that, and they start selling it as Star Trek, people would go mad because they would love that. And but you have um Discovery, which is kind of edgy, kind of different, kind of dark, kind of dark yeah um and and you have um and you have star trek written on it if it would have been just a normal uh, tv show without the starfleet in sydney us and and you know you can call the ship discovery it can look different whatever um you can keep the clingers it's they're ugly that's fine um but if you could just call it discovery without no one would have had the expectation of like hey i'm i'm going to see something something cool here it would have been a really interesting feel to give to the show that yo this is a new show like you're watching the expanse or you're watching watching discovery that's okay that's that's its own thing now and it it feels like star trek but it's not is it It, because we the audience aren't ready yet like up until now all of the star trek that we've had has been very similar in its style, in, in its execution. And so Discovery is the first real true departure. Like even the Kelvin timeline, though it was quite, it was action oriented, it still was very Star Trek flavored. Whereas yeah. Discovery is, it's it's not. It, it's Star Trek yeah, but... with, with a lot of, you know, spices on it. And um, so but is it... it because we're just not used to that yet? So I, I'm going to throw a little excerpt uh it's interesting that we've come on to this topic because i'm working on a video right now that has to kind of do with this so a little excerpt that i have in my script that talks oh my about god here we go spoilers I, Spo- hashtag spoilers <laughs> um and there was an interview that gene roddenberry did back in the 90s with the la times and he made it his mission i forget the whole quote i have it written down but he made it his mission essentially to show tv television producers that in order to have excitement on television it didn't have to involve car chases you know that was his general example that he used but essentially he was talking about violence he was talking about you know it doesn't have to involve pure action to create a sense of excitement on screen Mm. Um, and the reason i bring that up is you say is the audience not ready for that i i would say that the audience doesn't want it uh because the original star trek is so old that they didn't even have FCC guidelines when it first came out for television ratings. Um, but it is now rated TV PG. That's what it's rated as now. Uh, okay. The Discovery is rated TV MAV for mature violence, for sex, drug use, alcohol use, uh, simulated rape, uh, all this other stuff. I forget the whole thing. And I just don't think it has nothing to do with the audience not being ready because clearly the audiences can handle mature themes. Like look at the popularity of Westworld or The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones. Those have heavy mature themes in it. And it's just not what people want when they go to flick on Star Trek. And that's where I think that they miss the mark is it's not what people want when they watch Star Trek. And sometimes people don't know what they want and you have to kind of show them like, hey, this is better than you might have thought. It's like, mm. yeah, okay, but they shouldn't have. They sh- they they pushed it down people's throats too fiercely in the first season of Discovery, and I don't. I just think it pe- turned people off. I think if they slowly worked in the darker elements, and then eventually got more and more darker as time went on, it would have gotten it would have gotten a different reaction. So I don't think it's not ready. I think people just don't want it. Should they have done a, a more classic, more traditional Star Trek show, uh, have that ongoing, have that people, like, have people satisfied, and then try to do something completely different and call yeah. it Star Trek? Trek. Yes. Yeah. And, and do it gradually, not just like, this is what it is now. I mean, okay, you right. know, everyone, everyone compares, um, el- well, not everyone, but a few people compares Discovery in, in a sense with the Dominion War from DS9. And DS9 was a bit different, a different departure from Next Generation and um from the original series but um kind of you got this 
uh, war going on in DS9 and you have this war in, in season one Discovery and it's still um, the Dominion War felt much more Star Trek um, in, ev in every sense than, than the first season of Star Trek Discovery. And they didn't brag you on with like, hey, we are in war and then whatever. They still find optimistic um, feel to it and they still find some hope in every single episode and every single scenario. Maybe it wasn't really hopeful at the end because in, in some cases it turned out pretty bad in some episodes. But still, you you had this you had this feeling that you're watching something that um, gives you hope, even though it's it's really hard at that moment. Discovery didn't do that with you. I mean, it didn't do that with me at least. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think that our discussion is coming to an end. Um, I think we've come to. Have we come to some, some sort of some sort of conclusion or not at all? I'm not sure. Uh, is, it, is, is it is it yeah. fair to say that whatever they make, and it, w if they call it Star Trek, it is Star Trek. It's just that it's easier for us to um, interpret it as such if we have some sort of you know connection, even if it's a very small Easter egg. Um, I, I would say <laughs> that in terms of it being a property that can be marketed at Star Trek, yes, they have the ability to do that whenever they want. If it's going to be accepted by fans, we could have another 10-hour conversation about that. I but see. Yes, if you're asking just from a baseline perspective of if they just make a show or a movie and they have some elements to it, can they slap Star Trek on it and call it good? The answer, in my opinion, is yes, and it could potentially be really good. But uh, that depends on how fans are going to react. Hmm. Gary? Yeah, at the end, it all comes down to personal taste, isn't it? Um, it's okay. So this is going to be a long, <laughs> longer, a longer answer for your question. But um, ever since I, I'm a Star Trek fan. It's, it's, it's been over like probably same as you guys, or, or maybe a bit less. I don't know, but 20, 20 plus years. Um, I first watched. I started with Star Trek Voyager, and I, I, I fell in love with it. And I started watching Next Generation and DS9, actually in DS9 and then Next Generation. And, you know, some, at some point I always had an issue with DS9 at the beginning. I didn't really wanted to watch um, the Next Generation and then back in the TV, they only had DS9. And I, at the beginning, I remember saying it like, why do I have to watch this stupid station? I want to see the Next Generation. <laughs> and, you know, I fell in love with the show. I fell in love with the show. And then when Enterprise came, it was different. It was, it was new. But... I always looked at Star Trek um, from the very beginning. That and that that was my warm blanket. And I often say that in my um, in my videos every now and then. Um, that Star Trek is my warm blanket. So um, if I if I'm really troubled, I'm, if I was really troubled back then, I I watched an episode and I I felt hopeful. I felt cheerful. It, it was it was there for me. I I really connected with the show in every different way and with loads of different shows. And then in um, I was I was looking for that um, experience in in discovery, and even with short tracks as well. But I I I don't find my blanket anymore. And for me as a as a, as a trekkie, that I think it's really important for at least for me, it's really important to have that 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 blanket moment that you can you know, you know, so cozy and you 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 watch something, you really enjoy what you what you're watching. So that I, I can kind of. I kind of yeah, I'm. I miss my warm blanket, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna find it again in the future. No, nope, I agree, hundred percent. Okay, well, I'm gonna try and keep this positive, and I'm sure that you will find your warm blanket. There's so much Star Trek <laughs> being announced. There's so much different Star Trek shows being announced, and potential movies that might come out. That you know, there's bound to be at least one thing that can resemble that blanket. Oh, absolutely, and you know what? The same thing happens with. Um, okay, this is another um, um, like. Um, little diversion uh, with Doctor Who. I started to watch uh, the Doctor Who with um, 2005 series with Christopher Eccleston. I loved the Doctor and then he changed. New uh, guys, they started to do with new Doctors and they, they kept doing with new Doctors and you know what, every time was a new beginning and every time it felt um, familiar, it felt safe um, to go with. Even the, the current Doctor Jodie Whittaker, she's brilliant, we both love it and I I I'm, I do hope, and even season two discovery feels much more like more like Star Trek now, and I think that 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 really um, 
connects with, you know, we're going to see the enterprise, we're going to see Pike, we're going to see number one, we're going to see Spark. So there's loads of different, loads of things that we already familiar with, and they're going to bring it closer to us. So I, I do have hope. I do have hope that, you know, my blanket is coming back to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nick, final statement. I mean, I agree everything with uh, what Gary's saying about the blanket. It's, I think that the, uh, Everyone always kind of talks about the hopefulness and the the, the joy that they. There's experience. a warmth and kindness of a Star Trek crew, a Starfleet crew that you look for. Right, and uh, you're right. It's just not something that you experience so far, watching uh, Star Trek Discovery. So hopefully, we see something in the future that makes us feel that way, and it's not all, it's not all dark and bleak. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I don't think that we've come to some like sub 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 substantial conclusion here, but. It was a discussion nonetheless. <laughs> um, I, I'd love to know what you guys think. Leave a comment uh, in the comment section of YouTube if you're on YouTube. If you are on any of the you know uh, podcast apps, I don't know how it works yet. I don't know if they have comment sections. I don't know if you can send an email. Um, I really have no idea how that works. But um, feel free to share your opinions if you can. You can always find us on Twitter. Uh, Gary is you know Trick Uprise uh, on Twitter and on uh youtube nick is kitwalski on twitter and on youtube and i am trick on the tube on twitter and on youtube okay thank you very much for coming guys and uh thank you for everyone for listening see ya